started um, and I'm going to record this awesome. and now I'm going to go back. I'm going to most of the time you're not going to um, let me do this. Um, most of the time today, you guys aren't going to uh, going to see my face um, because we're going to be going through the slides and I will make the slides available as well. And I think we'll probably be able to put them along with the recording in uh, in the Skype. Um, I think if that makes sense, Zane. And then it'll also be on the Telvin Jeffries Dream Grow page on Facebook um, as well. Awesome, awesome. I'll do the same thing on the Institute's Facebook page and the respective groups. Got it. Um, I'm going to ask if I can actually have Brother Paul pray for us before we get started, and then I'm going to jump right into it. Awesome. Okay, Tilden. Thank you, sir. Um, Father, we thank you for gathering us, us together today to learn uh, your uh, Kingdom Financial uh, by Brother Tilden. And we tr trust to, that you will open our, uh, our eyes and our heart uh, to, to understand deeply and to take a step in our kingdom and possess our position in the kingdom. We trust you, Father. We, we thank you. And we ask you to give our brother Telvin uh, your word and your uh, intelligence to explain us how he steps into your financial kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, and hopefully you guys can all hear me. Um, I, I'm going to try to approach this um, from a, first of all, from my own experience and how um, I have noticed how the biblical and spiritual um, aspects have actually mirrored what I have seen in business and um and so we'll go i'm, I'm a lot of time talking about functionally what works and then i'm going to actually stop and talk about scriptures that match up with that um i think about the scripture where jesus says if you don't understand the natural things then why am I going to explain to you the spiritual things? And so I am going to start from that context. Is that okay? Yes, it's awesome. Right. So um, let me just start for, for we're all on this call, the calls weekly, I guess, um, in the Institute for the last two years. Um, and sometimes we don't really know about the person. I just think it's important for me to give you some context um, about what I do and what I've done and what I, where I'm from and kind of helps you maybe, ex, you know, explains uh, for you why, why um, I have some of the, the, some of the point of views um, that I have and why maybe um, some of the things, and just being honest, why why you should make you know why why am I here? Why should you listen to me <laughs> um, as it relates to some of these things? So um, I, I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, um, in the South here in the United States, and um, I I uh, after college I, I went to I went to uh, Virginia Union University um, in Richmond originally, and it's a school known for for uh, producing black baptist ministers um or became a teacher an accountant that was pretty much it um it's pretty much the way it, it worked um and i realized that i did not um while i was the kid who actually um was always in church and grew up around it and always the kid who was always reading my Bible as a kid, um, I just was like, I'm not sure I'm the guy 
who really is called to ministry, even though everyone in my family told me that's what I was going to do. And throughout, and I think this can be helpful for people. For me, I always had this idea of that there was A and B. Um, there was A, you go do ministry and then you're in the will of God, or B, um, you then you did something in um, in the secular world. And if you didn't do that, then there was, you know, there was something, there was something wrong with you. I mean, B was kind of not, it was kind of not like the, you know, that was kind of settling. And then I learned later that that was just pure nonsense. And that my, and that I'm, that I was, you know, my calling at least, uh, at that time was definitely not ministry in the context that I had been told I wasn't going to be the Baptist preacher. In fact, they actually told me that I, um, people used to walk up and tell me that I had a, I had a head like a preacher, <laughs> um, which was hilarious. And, um, and so, uh, the, I mean, the, 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 that was the kind of things that, that went on. And I think you could have all of this kind of craziness going on, right? Um, where people, where you think you're supposed to do something and you, and you actually maybe miss your very, you miss your very calling. So anyway, I later, I went to, I, I went to Columbia Southern University and studied business administration and decided, obviously, because I made this decision, there's just no way that I'm actually going to go into ministry. Um, I started my, my professional career at Kohl's Department Stores, which is a department store here based in the United States. At the time when I joined the company, we were doing about $700 million in sales. Um, and when I left, we were doing $19 billion mm-hmm. and an annual revenue. And uh, for nine of those 10 years, I was the executive vice president of human resources for them. Um, and then I left and I moved to Dallas, Texas to be the executive vice president of international operations. So running non-US store operations, full p and responsibilities um, for, non, for non-US stores, um, which also included, if you guys are familiar with the Target stores, Radio Shack ran the uh, kiosks that sold mobile phones and mobile accessories in all of the uh, Target stores, and that was also my responsibility. And I did that. Um, I did that up until 2014. And um, I said to myself when I was a uh, when I was probably 24 or 25. I made the decision that there was no way that I would be a, personally in my own mind, by the time I was 50, I did not want to work for someone else. I was, it would be better for me if I would be an entrepreneur. And so I started um, my company at the time, it was called Career Logistics, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's just a brand change. Um, but we really focused on, uh, providing, um, really what we call augmented human resources services for HR departments. So if they gave us, if they had a project, they did not have, um, any experience with the, or they didn't have enough manpower. I would go find enough people. We put project and I basically augmented or supplemented their, um, HR department. And then later, I decided that um, I needed to get more focused so that because it's easier to market. And we'll talk about that later um, when you get really, really focused. And I decided that that was going to be the better, the better, the better answer for for me. So um, so I've now been in my own business now. This will be my sixth year. Um, and primarily what I do is I work with senior executives and companies, CEOs, uh, and, and down, but 
the senior level people in these organizations, I work with them on uh, either leadership, helping them improve processes, systems, our, our talent issues, uh, business operations. And I work with technology companies. Um, I work with, um, for here, for example, I work with Dallas Area Rapid Transit, which is the train, uh, train, state, train uh, and bus system here in Dallas, just to give you an idea. But it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all, of, all of those kinds of um, scenarios. So that maybe hopefully gives you some, give you guys some context. Um, I also serve on the board of directors for Convoy of Hope um, and, and, and also on their marketing committee. And Convoy of Hope is a, uh, is a disaster relief organization that's part of the Assembly of God. Uh, and we give away about $80 million worth of food a year. Um, and we primarily focus on, again, disaster relief in the U.S., but we're now doing international project, projects that support women, um, edu women's education in uh, tough, you know, tough countries like Haiti, for example. And then I serve on the advisory board for Evergreen Trading, uh, which is a company basically that we buy impaired assets. So if a company has a plant, or a jet, for example, and the book value is very low and they'd like to sell it and they need cash, uh, we actually take those uh, assets and we will, we will trade those assets for marketing dollars for television uh, advertising primarily and uh, they get the full value. So if the plane is worth $5 million, uh, book value, but you can only get uh, maybe a million and a half dollars uh, if they were to resell it. We will give them the five million dollars for the uh, full five million dollars, and then we will get rid of. The, we'll figure out a way to dispose of the plane, but they get the cash, so it helps their books. So, um, or and more importantly, it actually helps them uh, the cash they need, which tells us all by the. Um, there are, when people are worried about getting capital for your business, there are lots of interesting ways and creative ways uh, that out there to get, to get money uh, for, 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 for our business. Um, well, so I, th I think that's interesting. So um, today, what I'm going to do is go through about, I'm going to go through two modules here. Um, and I, by the way, I'm not able to see the chat. So I just want to make sure. Um, Zane, that's right. Zane needs his own plane. So I'm going to stop in a couple of times just to make sure um, that we are um, see if there's if there's any questions. Um, and I'll stop a couple of times. What I'd like to do today right now is go through two modules of this course that I have um, that I'm that it's just a brand new course. I've never that I'm I'm first time teaching it. I have had this course done for probably six or seven months, um, but haven't used it. So Zane actually is giving me a reason to use this course and get on with it. Um, so I think, you know, I think a lot of people dream of starting a business, but um, we get psyched out about it. And um, I heard someone say something the other day that made a lot of sense to me. And it's something I've learned on my own here. And I think it, those of you who've had your own business or have your own business, you know that it requires more faith um, to be a entrepreneur than it probably requires to actually work in an enterprise, work for an organization. And it is, it is, for me, I will tell you, when I was in corporate America, every I, I would say to people all the time, I'd be talking about faith. I got so much faith and you need, and you need to get your faith right. And yes, I got crazy faith and my faith is good. Well, the truth is I had no faith. That was a lie. Um, it wasn't an intentional lie. It was an ig a lie of ignorance um, because you learn very quickly to uh, be prayerful 
and to uh and to wor- and to leverage um your your relationship i mean you really have to work with the spirit and have direction and guidance and there's a lot of times you're praying for things to work out um because if they don't work out it could be sometimes the end of your business uh it could in it could hurt cash flow your ability to pay your employees where when i was in corporate america look the check came on the 15th and 30th even if i made a mistake or not and so i so i so um so it, it, for me i would say i i wouldn't change it for the world i love it um it makes me feel alive but it's certainly a daunting task um and i think you know i think a lot of it's a reason why a lot of people don't do it what i'm going to talk about today and um over the next several weeks is how to start the business start your own business successfully and do things that quite honestly um some of this stuff i didn't do right at the beginning um but eventually i end up having to do so today um i want to talk about three things and um zane will laugh probably because he knows him and i i we talk i talked to him uh, recently about um how i talk about everything in threes but i want to talk our learning objectives today would be one is to talk about how to develop a biblical entrepreneurial mindset and then secondly how to combine your personal lifestyle vision um and with your spiritual values in your business and find a business that also and how to find what you're supposed to do like what should you be doing and find a business that uses your strengths and your particular talents that's different than when you're looking for a job Um, Sometimes when you're looking for a job, you're looking, you're going to be looking always um, at like what you can do to make money. It's like the Bible says, um, do what your hands find to do and then do it with all your might, right? And think about a business, um, you are really, really, really have an obligation to actually find a business that uses your strength and your strengths and your talents because the way that you actually make the most money and create the most profit so that you have the right amount of money for yourself and money to actually uh, help fulfill a kingdom assignment to give money to places that have need is that you are selling your, your place of grace. You're selling your place of grace and that's your strength and talent. So your, you know, our strengths, and talent is our is is a grace and so you're actually uh monetizing um your 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 grace i'm gonna stop for just a second and ask before i go any further let's see let's stop the share for a moment and i'm gonna ask you guys to unmute just so far is is this uh is this kind of what you the direction that you're hoping to get out of this today absolutely thank you anyone else very absolutely yep bring it on i'm waiting for you (laughs) all right yes yes (laughs) all right all right I'm open-minded about it and looking forward to whatever you have to say. And um, I didn't have any expectation, but anything of the kingdom, I want to know about it. All right. Okay. That's awesome. Um, Patty always says it perfectly, and that's what the same for me. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. me too. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm here. and I'm taking in all the information. It's awesome to... Um, to get, you know, first-hand experience from an um, a actual, a actual person in this, um, in this field. So, yeah. Awesome. And Richard? Oh, well, I'm not sure who that is. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get go back. 
Well, now Richard decided he was going to jump off. <laughs> That's funny. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's go back to the slides. And you, can you guys all see my slide now? Yeah, we can yes, see it. Bro. Awesome. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, so let's let's talk about hold on. Um so we talked about one developing a biblical mindset. I think that's the foundation that we want to go with. Um, we also want to do, we also want to help you. I also want to help you. I want to talk about identifying your target audience, um, a, creating a profitable niche um, because that is probably one of the biggest, uh, this, these, these two, this whole identify your target audience and finding a profitable niche is the reason why most businesses fail. Um, that we actually have an idea, we think it's a great idea, but the research has not been done to figure out who this particular person is that I want to serve. And, um, and so when you talk about identifying your target audience, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have conversation and we'll probably won't get to that till week two, but um, but it's important to be thinking about is who do you want to serve and what is he or she like? So I'll use this example um, that um, happened when I, that happened with, with Cole. So I don't know if you guys know, so you guys who aren't in the U S maybe Cole's wouldn't be think of, wouldn't, wouldn't readily be in your mind, but Cole's is a department, a, a department store that sells both women's, men's, children's home, home decor, like things like and bedding and sheets, uh, decorate I'm, some, um, what I would call light home appliances and uh, footwear and sporting, uh, sporting clothes but no different than probably any other department store. But Kohl's has decided, Kohl's, we decided when I was there that the only person we, was, we were concerned about was that we were concerned about women who had kids, two of them, who actually she probably was a stay at home full time mom or maybe a part time worker but she was responsible for the total household generally she was married and she was middle income and um and that drove every bit of our advertising every bit of how we actually designed our store so for example you uh, if you're if you're a traditional department store you might actually have um you might have multiple layers the store in the united states might have two or three floors but we knew that she was a mom with two kids and she was really busy so we would put everything on one floor we created a racetrack basically so she could go in a square and we did everything from pricing a product to the amount of sizes that we had to all of the signage in the store to make sure that mom that we were building it for mom down to the size of the aisles so that she could actually get the shopping cart through so that at the end of the day every i mean literally every little detail was about her. How did we do that? We under we we were more interested in figuring out what her problems were so that we could solve them than we were focused on how much money we could get from her. Because if we got the idea, if we solved all her problems, we would be her destination. But you can only do that if you narrow in it is to me 
like Jesus being very focused going in only to <laughs> only to Israel first and being very focused on his message. He didn't even really address Gentile issues. And at the same time, it's exactly what we were doing. Let's be really clear who we're talking to. We cannot be there for everyone. We're, gonna, we're going to be very narrow and very specific to who we're going to talk to. But the second part is we're going to be very narrow and what we're going to sell. So everything for Coles was about what can we sell that she can easily access, put in a bat and a shopping and a shopping cart that actually could double as a stroller, and that she could put or she could put in a large duffel bag on her arm, right, and get in and out of our store very quickly. But it was everything was built around her and whatever we whatever we built in terms of a broader assortment of clothes and items which we would sell to her those things would always be for her even down to what we sold in the men's department we were selling to her so we were going to big pick product that we knew she bought for her husband products that we know she would buy for her kids so everything is about her our niche is about middle income middle america anybody else we were not concerned with and on the surface that seems like that doesn't make sense but if you can snipe a message versus spray a message and be so in tune to that person's needs you're better able to serve them. And when you think about building a kingdom-minded business, my point of view is I want to be able to, and I love what Zane, Zane always talks about breaking, you know, uh, relieving oppression. I think about it as her problem is an oppression. His problem, my customer's problem is oppressing them. And, and so I get really focused on identifying specific people that I can relieve oppression from. That's exactly how I do my coaching business. I am looking for a, a certain size of company. I'm looking for a certain age of a person so that I know that I, my language, my marketing, my words, the things I say only resonate with them. And that way I can perfect who I'm serving and the quality of service. And then I can be self-existent there because I can offer excellence if I really know you and I know what your problems are. I know what you're thinking. So people who are in their 40s, for example, like that's one of the target markets that I have. People, executives in their 40s, they have certain issues that the other people uh, don't have. And so I really try to narrow in on that particular audience in my coaching business. The third part here is selecting a business model that fits your needs. And for me, what's important is I, at this point in my life, have said I want a lifestyle business. I don't want a business that is going to require me to do what I did in corporate America where I had to spend every week on the road, traveling all over the world, literally. I, uh, my Mexico, when I was in uh, Radio Shack, my last uh, two years at Ra Radio Shack, I spent a lot of time in Mexico City and not in the US. And, um, and so in terms of me serving, um, in terms of me actually having just even a strong faith life was almost re was really difficult for me to be able to do because I was just all my head was always on a swivel and so um even today when i um I talk today to someone who is going to help me do a sales lead or sale gen uh, generate do a um, lead generation 
And they asked me, well, how much revenue do you want to build this year? And we're going to talk about that kind of thing in a moment. But one of the things that I said to them is, first, let's start about who I want to work with and what geographies what I want to work with. Because I want, one of the reasons I moved to Dallas is because it's, it's you know, it's 8 million people in the Metroplex. There are enough people here for me to do business with in the Metroplex. And I don't have to travel all over the world. And I can be home uh, for my daughter at 6 o'clock. Um, and I don't have to be thinking about that I'm traveling Monday through, through, through Friday. And today, in today's world, that's all realistic. That's just not a stretch. Um, and so the, you, we can create a world like that. And we're going to talk about that, how you can create a world to do that. Where we're going with my business is I spend two hours on, on a phone on average with customers, um, with my customer, with each coaching client, two hours once a week. But where I'm going long term is I'm like this course, I'm going to be selling this course digitally and pre recorded. And I'm going to try to sell this to thousands of people versus doing one on one. And that even more gives me more leverage time to do things like ministry. And, um, and for me, the whole, the whole thought process is, you know, why do, what, what do, what, what's going to meet my need? Well, for me, what's really important is for me to be able to have enough money to take care of my needs for whatever amount of time. Zane <clears throat> has us all living to over 150 years now, which means I got to have a lot of money that's got to last um, for that period of time. So I need to be creating businesses that are going to sustain what I believe um, is going to happen with my life. And so I could say, well, I'm at a certain age and now I'm thinking, you know, well, I'm winding down. No, 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 no. If I'm going to be another 150 years, I got to create businesses and wealth that can actually trans that, that I can have that's going to allow me to live the lifestyle that I have when I'm 100 and also that I can transfer wealth to other people, other to, 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 my, to my child and my child so I can have generational wealth, right? Because uh, the Bible says, right, that he leaves to his children's children. <laughs> and, so, um, and so I have to be thinking about as I'm building out a business, that's about need. Like I'm building this business, what's going, what can I build for now? And one of the things that um, I think is important for us all as Christians is that we're listening to the spirit and we're being wise and we're being vigilant and we're watching what's happening in the world and we're constantly pivoting, constantly saying, this is an idea, but I got to constantly be asking myself, what's next? It is, there is no question. The world is moving at a rate faster than it's ever moved. Things are changing so, so fast. And I'm going to give you guys a statistic. <clears throat> in the 19, in the 1960s, I'm sorry, in the 1970s, the average company in the U.S. was around 98 years. The average company in the U.S. was around 98 years. The average, and that's Fortune 500 company, big mega companies, they were around 98 years. Today, the average Fortune 500 company life is about 13, I think it's 13 or 14 years. The average CEO in the 70s was in their job for a whopping, <laughs> crazy, a whopping 30 plus years. Today, the average CEO is only in their job four years. Why? It's because the businesses aren't 
morphing with what's going on in the world and the rate that it is, not serving the customer, they're more focused on serving the business, serving themselves, and they're not shifting, they're not evolving. And then the second challenge is that these business, that the CEOs do not have the ability because they don't have the mindset to keep making that mental shift that they need to make. And most of these CEOs are not just retiring. They are being retired. Uh, the, the organizations and boards are saying, you were good for now. You got to keep it moving. And the wise guys say to themselves, it's time for them to move, to move on. <clears throat> Continuing with learning objectives, and we're going to get into detail um, over the next couple of weeks, is design a viable, we're going to talk about how to design a real viable product that you can take to market. And we're going to be talking about the things, the products, and the ideas that are working right now. For me, I have become the guy who no longer thinks about, um, as I think about a digital business and stop thinking about a business that's only focused on Dallas. What the other part of my business, I'm saying my business needs to be international. It needs to, when I'm thinking about a model, it cannot be about my local town for me if I want it to be 100 years from now um, because it's not going to last. Um, and there is revenue and, and people who have needs in other countries that I could take my package price product and make it such a small price that what I'm giving these CEOs literally for $36,000 a year, I could be selling to a bunch of people for $36 and ultimately make probably the same money and work less and have less stress. Because in these two hour calls, I take on a lot of drama, a lot of crazy, a lot of these people's problems and it's probably not the right long, long-term long strategy. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about how to design a viable product or service to kickstart sales. And like, you know, how do we get some revenue going quickly? And then, because um, I want to make this very practical and actionable, um, taking, um, taking direction from um, Zane and Kelly, right? And, and that okay, we got to apply this stuff. And in this, we're going to talk about how to apply it really quickly and do some tests uh, and, and get some feedback. How to run a legally established business. I can only speak in the U.S. context or other places. You're going to have to figure out what it takes to do that. Um, and then we're going to talk about branding basics, like how to get some branding basics in place. And when I talk about branding, I'm, I'm talking about really your particular, whatever you call your organization, your thing you're going to start, how do you take that beyond the name and make it so clear about what you do? And then how are you going to make sure people know that you exist and why you exist and, um, and how you actually solve a problem that they that they have. We're going to talk about how to set um, value based pricing because what I have learned in my five years, uh, six years of in my own business, is that um, I didn't really understand pricing, and ultimately, I lost a lot of money. I lost left a lot of money on the table, um, and probably I might have even lost some customers because they thought my, my price was too good and they didn't, weren't sure that the product would be um, of, of value. And, um, and so there's, a, there's, you know, we can go too far on that, right? You can see item, you can see things that go, that's too good to be true. And then you can go on the other side of it um, where you see people actually are gouging people and there isn't a there isn't a there isn't a clear message to why that's why why that um why why people should pay that. We're going to talk about how to formulate a marketing plan um and so that we're so that and because at the end of the day right now it's all about marketing and formulate a marketing plan 
that you build out for two or three months and you're not actually reacting every day saying, oh, I got to put something out there. I got to put a message. And the message is coherent because it's on a plan and it's a campaign. So we're building to a place. And you can see this, actually, I love it. You can see this in scripture where the Lord actually taught things line by line right? The Bible is all, the whole thing is building on concepts, building on principles. And, um, and so there, and, and you can see that this very clear, coherent message, right? And so if, if we do the, you know, a little bit of marketing here, a little bit of marketing there, um, what will end up happening is it's really not clear to the person and you're not building up a message uh, and building up a, a connection to your organization, to what your to your business, um, if you're doing a little bit here, a little bit there. The second thing that's important around this formulation of a marketing plan is that you will stop. You won't rely on trying to sell stuff to people <coughs> that you know. Um, I, I I I personally don't believe in marketing on Facebook and all these other places to people that you know, um, because there are people you know aren't buying things from you. Un unfortunately, there's a lot of research on this. It goes back um, over 60 years. The people who you know are the least likely to help you in any business, to help you close a deal, to buy from you, to help you get a deal. It, that re the research goes on 60 years that that's the case. It lines up again with scripture. A prophet is not honored in their own town. <laughs> so it, it, it lines up. It makes sense. The, last, the next one is set the date for your first launch and, and plan it. We're going to come up, hopefully, if you go through this with me, we're going to come up with the date right? I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to launch something with you guys. Um, and we're going to see, we're going to be able to come back and test our results, right? Against this, against this work. And we're going to be able to say, we did this and we're going to be able to share what we each learn and doing it. And we can make this as small as we want, as large as we want. We're going to talk about how to come up with some key metrics to track your business progress. Um, I posted something today on Facebook, um, and because I was thinking about this, um, is that one of the best things you can do is write down every day what you accomplish, but write down also what you're spending and what you're earning. And um, it is. And, and against what you plan to spend. And the Bible says what man goes to war without counting the cost. And so um, business in a lot of contexts is a place where we actually do war. <laughs> and, and I know that for the, for the Christian ear, that does not sound right. Um, but we are warring in the marketplace. It is a war for dollars. It is a war for share of voice, of message. And so you're competing with other people. And so in order to know how to do the, because if we think we're not competing with someone, we're not living in this world. We're not living in reality. So what we want to do is come up with some metrics to tell us if we're moving our business along. And even when we have some hiccups, we can, we can identify, okay, uh, is this so bad? What, is, what should I be looking at? What should you be telling me if my business is working or not? I come from 22 years of corporate retail experience where at the end of the day, my report card, in retail, our report card is every day. It is the number of footsteps that walk into a store <laughs> it, and the number of dollars that go into the register. That is my report card. 
if too many days of negative in that report card, then we know there's a problem and we can identify where it is and we can fix it. It is, it is, I also say, now that I have my own business, it is where I get to go back to God and say, I have the mind of Christ, give me direction on what I should be doing next and where am I off? Where am I not walking and wisdom and also what i believe it is also gives me opportunity which we'll talk about later to go to other people and talk to them about my problem and get ideas the bible says that 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 wisdom is found in a multitude of counselors hopefully we can create a group here where we can be that for each other. But we're going to want to talk to other people in our business, in our community. Talk to your competition. I mean, they're re- I mean, listen, at the end of the day, there is no reason to keep secrets. Um, you're not going to tell them everything. Um, but um, you do need, we do need to build a community of people who actually are like-minded, who are in business that, and doing certain things that we want to do, and we want to pick their brain. My bishop in Wisconsin always said this, and he made it so, and I loved it. He would say, if you're honest, you can get help. If you're not honest, you can't get help. And so it is not that I would be complaining, but I'm definitely going to be looking at my numbers. I'm actually, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm counting my sheep. I know how many I have. And so it is important for me to then go and talk to other people and get ideas on what they're doing. Because sometimes the answer from the Lord comes from other people. That's why wisdom is found in a multitude of counselors. Um, The next thing is setting up systems to increase your efficiency and save time. I am telling you, in 2020, there are enough businesses, enough business models out there for you to make a a lot of money where you're only probably spending literally I'm not exaggerating this 30 25 to 30 hours a week at at it um there is enough and if you build and if you build the right business um you you're going to do something that I that I pray often I I I declare that I am a conduit for jobs and better jobs. Meaning I'm a conduit. I am, I'm the guy who is going to create, be a platform for other people to get a job and for people to get better jobs than they have now. Okay. And so now I, because multiplication to me is a clear biblical principle. And so I am going to try to create a set of systems to create, to increase my efficiency, save time so I don't have to spend so much time on the business and I'm not working in the business because that's where it gets crazy for most of us, working in the business versus on the business. Let me say that one more time. Working almost every entrepreneur is spending too much time working in their business and not on their business. And it is a clear governor to the business. When I was in retail, if I walked into a store and my store manager was on the register, he he or she would not be there very long because you cannot run a store and actually be the person collecting the money. Doesn't make sense. You can't, because you are to me I am asking you to be the mayor. (laughs) I'm not asking you to be the person who actually is the policeman in the in the in the police car. I need you to be thinking about efficiency, process, people moving problems out of the way, coming up with new ideas to improve the business, to make more money, right? Because the amount of people we serve, the more people we can serve, 
the more money we're going to make. And the more money I'm going to help you make, Mr. Store Manager, the more money we can pay these employees. And more important, the next thing, what I always say to all of my clients is you, if you, I, I'll give you a conversation I had recently. I have a CEO that I work with, and they have about 150 employees. They're a, they're a, um, a financial technology company. And um, I always remind him, you are the response. You have the resp You have 100, 100. Sorry, they have 100 employees. You have a responsibility for 400 people, probably, not 100. And I want you to think about it. So when you're whatever decision you're making, to not actually have key, uh, key performance indicators or metrics to tell of your progress of your business, and you're not looking to increase your efficiency and save time and make more money, you are jeopardizing. 400 people you're jeopardizing that employee their spouse and their two kids on average you're jeopardizing their future you have a responsibility to all of them and it is not an emotional that is not an emotional um that's not an emotional um message that's a fact right and so Th that that's the bigger reason. And one of the things that I think for me, when I talk to Christians in general, Christians are like, well, I don't need more money. I'm happy with the money I have. Well, you're being selfish. It's not about the money you have. It's about the money you can have and you can give to the causes and to the ministry and to the people who have need water and food, because there is enough resources on the earth. I learned this the other day, blew my mind. They said that there is enough, there's enough property in the state of Texas where I live. There's enough property in the state of Texas for, ev for everyone in the world to have a home, a decent size place to live when we pray and when we think about it we're in it we're generally saying to ourselves we come from a a lack mindset as christians but god said after the seventh day he said it was finished he actually gave everything the earth would need before he actually brought man on the earth and when i hear stories Oh, I hear data like that, that there is enough for every place for everybody to live in Texas. I go, wait a minute. It's proof that God has already made the provision, but he's looking for the sons of God to disperse it. I am now clear. I cannot move without the spirit, but the spirit cannot move without me. I'm going to stop for a moment and see if there are any questions. I'm unmuting all the lines. And let's see if there are any questions or comments. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to unmute and say something. Um, can, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, awesome. What you're sharing, bro, is already deconstructing my whole understanding of how to conduct business. The principles that you're taking out of the scripture and applying to business, I must say from, from the first one that you shared concerning um, Jesus and a prophet not being welcome in his own hometown, that right there hit me, it hit home really hard. Um, because that relates to some of the experiences that I have had as an entrepreneur. And what you're sharing here with respect to the um the lack mindset is 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 awesome. Um when I say awesome, I mean in the sense that it's like, whoa, good reminder. <laughs> there is on the earth enough food. Mm -hmm. In a few in a few states to feed the entire world. 
Great. We're not taught to think like that. That's the thing about it. <laughs> so it is, there is, it literally is more than enough. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking into that, definitely. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, Telvin, I, yes. um, I am sitting here and, you know, I'm <clears throat> basically flabbergasted yeah. Yeah. as to the information that is coming across here. Why? Because um, as a young boy growing up, you know, I have always desired to be a businessman and to be a businessman to help people out of, you know, lack, um, help people create better lives, you understand? Know, because they themselves, as you mentioned before, they grow up and they think that is what their life is, you understand? Know, and all the, some people look at it as handouts, but it's not necessarily handouts, it's, it's, you know, it's actually making connections and helping people to, to become who they actually were supposed to be, you know, yes. understand? And a lot of businesses today do not think this way. And I am, I am really, really, really grateful um Telvin to be a part of this group in terms of um to, to hear this kind of information because you know all what you mentioned in there I know it in terms of mentally what what um what my issue was is getting us struck here in mm -hmm. terms of you know um good wages taking into consideration that when someone when an employee loses their job right um you're not just it's not just that person, but their family is affected, et cetera, et cetera. And the whole cascading effect. And a lot of people don't take these things into consideration. What my issue is as a young entrepreneur is structure. And this is what I'm trying to, you know, get, get on par right now. Structure. So awesome. We're going to be able to hit that. Definitely. Yeah, um, tell them for me yes, to tell is um, what you're actually putting here in, in this structured manner is literally deconstructing a lot of what is actually taught to entrepreneurs. Because the, what, what, what you're mentioning and what you're revealing here is that a lot of the quote unquote business courses or entrepreneurial courses are training people in the poverty mindset. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Literally doing that. And so they're pursuing and they are, they are approaching business as though this is a struggle and we have to keep our heads above the water in this struggle. Yes. But what you've done here in this little segment right here is actually by scripture and using scripture, deconstructed that entire thing and show that we are really here, which is what uh, <clears throat> the Christ mindset should be. You are here as a priest to serve yes, and, and not to struggle. And then later on, after your struggle, 10, 20 years down the road, then you can actually serve with pittance. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. This is awesome. This is awesome. Thank you, sir. Talvin, hi. Um, hi. This is, I mean, I came in a delay tell. Um, but, but what I've heard so far is so true because um, I have struggled as an entrepreneur um, for a while now with um, with that same mindset of, you know, having to, oh, if I don't do this, you have to work hard on it. You have to, and thinking about um, how much money I will make for the day and why I'm not, I'm not increasing and why this isn't working out. I just feel like I spin in top in mud. And I mean, God had to really um, deal with me where that is concerned because when I stepped out, he said to me that, um, see what I will do. And I was relying on my own understanding, on my own strength, thinking that I am going to do it and it's not who I am and, um, and, and what God has given to me. Because um, he said, I mean, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. 
and also that that um you know that we have power to get wealth um you know so i had to really restructure my mindset in that sense and also by by um you know in zine classes really build a foundation in the sense of who i am and not looking okay on my strength what am i doing each day and how to do this and how to do that and just rely on my, the spirit in me leading me into that ex- excellence and into that um, perfecting my business because um, I mean I am in the area of um, food mm-hmm. and um, I is it's something that God has given to me. Um, yes, I did um, a course and so on, but in sense of um, taste is something that God has given to me. I would be able to taste something and know exactly what it's missing, exactly what it needs. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes I doubt myself, but, you know, I'm learning to, to, to just trust the spirit of me that guides him because he only wants excellence in me. He, of yes. course, wants me to succeed, right? And, right? and that is what I approach now. So I have lifted the mindset of, okay, um, I have to slave over this and I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this or otherwise I'm not going to, and you put in a, uh, as, as Zane said it, you put a, a formula to, to everything. And if that don't work, you know, it's going down and all of that. And I, I really have to, I mean, you have to have wisdom in how you do things, Yes. but also I rely on the spirit, rely on God's spirit where where customers are concerned I go out there and because recently I had an instance where where I am, competition usually comes right. and um, they step in and, and my husband would be like, oh gosh, somebody else come. I said, what are you worried about? When God placed me here, what did he say to me? See what I would do. And you have to trust God and know that you are here to succeed. I know that he's not only going to leave me here, but I mean, he's going to expand me and because, you know, the, 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 what he has in store is much bigger than what I'm thinking. And what is my purpose in this business? Yes. What am I supplying? This what, what, as you said, what problem, what, what need am I meeting in this business? So I, I, mean, would, ask you, has to be, I would ask you to think um, about this. Uh, and for everyone listening, to be asking the Lord, what is your assignment? So right. assignment is different than purpose. Uh-huh. What is your assignment? Right. I am a firm believer in that if, 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 so let's back up. We know that in the beginning, he made all these things and he said that it was good meaning perfect in that context right we now know that in order that order is the way god also operates and so he's requiring excellence from us requiring good And we know also that all the things that we are identifying in the earth are things that were already there, right? Planes, electricity, the ability to run a cell phone. All of these things already existed. But someone actually discovered them and then decided that they were going to actually monetize those things to make the world work better. Right? Are you guys with me? Yeah, yeah. So, your somebody, somebody was supposed to create the iPhone. 
or the cell phone. It was their assignment. I mean, literally, they were supposed to do that. And Christians think that the only assignments are to go to Africa and share the gospel. <laughs> okay? The reality is God wants somebody, God had to tell somebody. He, he created someone to actually like traffic engineering so that there actually could be stoplights, <laughs> right? And, we w and, and that cities, which are the place of, uh, are on the earth are places of glory, cities could do commerce and people can go and come. It, and order exists, okay? And we as Christians are sometimes, we have been taught or made to believe that that thing isn't actually God putting things back in order. So let me back up. If you go back to the very beginning and in the six days and the seven, he created everything that was good and then the ground was cursed and the ground was cursed, right? And things became in disorder. Now he all what we've been doing is we've been bringing things on the earth back in order. And the Christians, the people with the mind of Christ, of the one who created it all, the, we get to be the manifest sons of God <laughs> that creation is waiting for. And God always wants order. And our assignment can be, again, as Zane talks about oppression, it is we are trying to create a better world for people to live in. And if you just took the base and say, okay, how can the gospel be spread more efficiently? All of these things do that. But it's not that simple. He actually created a work. He is constantly using the the sons of God, to create things. We can go back and look. The people who actually came up with the greatest scientific discoveries were all believers in God. And so it is, I mean, so I, 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 am, I am constantly saying to myself, what is my assignment. I'm asking my clients, what is your assignment? I'm not, I, and so I'm, I love the idea of purpose, and I think purpose is really important, but I'm going to say, know your purpose, but be very, but be clear about your assignment, because if you're clear about your assignment, you're going to look for opportunities to serve your world in ways that it needs. And when you do that, right, when I do that, the, the, the wealth, the money is going to come. And here's the last point. No one, no one can do that assignment better than you. Because I'm for it. When I realized in Scripture that when he was actually, God was telling people to make, when he was saying, go make the temple, he said, Go and find the person who had the expert skill and working with Acacia Wood, okay? Go get the person who is, who is working, who knows how to make purple, <laughs> right? How to go, the person who knows how to make colors, the person who knows how to work with gold, right? And so, wait a minute, and I'm like, wait a minute, he foreordained and prepared these people with these certain skills way before he needed it, but they were using it not only for that short period of time to make the temple or to make the Ark of the Covenant, okay? But he was also, but it was 
also to actually make their community better. So I really think there's a huge opportunity and I'm, I am learning how to apply that more and more because when I can get clear about my assignment, then I said earlier, um, sister, sister Shelly, guess what? I really don't have to worry about competition because I'm just like the word sent and I won't return to him void. I'm going, it's, it's going to be, it's going to work for me. Um, all the time. It is, go, it is always going to work for me because I was, the earth is expecting me to do that thing. And those people will hire me and they don't even know why they're hiring me and they're going to use me because I am part of, of actually connecting to the order on the earth. And I'm going to stop and Shelly, but hopefully, um, I don't know if you had anything else to add, but I wanted to add that to this. Because I love when you said purpose. I'm like a black Baptist preacher, even though I'm not one. So I need, I'm calling on response. So I need to hear from you. I don't need you to type it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that sounds that's fine. I was trying to go back and forth um here to get back. No, no, I, I understand. I I understand what you're saying and it's true. It's, it's definitely true. So I'm Thank in total one hundred percent agreement with you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody yeah. else? Yes, yeah, sir. I, I would also like to um to, to um, to comment on what you said there because um, you met, like you mentioned that the, 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 the Christian most most Christians they speak about purpose and what, and what you clearly are identifying there is the fact that unfortunately Christians actually see God from the perspective of that moral compass instead of understanding that the, that God is about function that, that whole idea of how you are actually functioning and basically yeah. what you're saying if, if I am gathering what you're saying correctly is that you are here to contribute to the whole grand scheme of order and you have something in particular to contribute to that order so that the grand scheme of order is grand indeed <laughs> yes I, I am i am i am i am foreordained to be an apple tree exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> right um and so i don't really have to worry right all the other all the and literally and this is we see this there now she's seeing this in science um if i'm in the proper terrain all and another 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 tree grows up there the other trees will talk to the other tree that's actually trying to take my life source and they will cut it off for real indeed <laughs> indeed that's so, an analogy, yeah? <laughs> okay yeah. So it, it it is it is it is awesome. It is just awesome to see what like how he's created this. Yeah, but it's it's also um, the, the 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 entire message or what he has just communicated there. Um, I hope it speaks to the scenes that actually hear this that they should get off of that platform of moral compass, and that's why they want to go to places like Africa, and. And, and because they need, because they think that that is the right thing to do, you know, that that is the godly thing to do. But they're not, they're not, they're missing the whole point of the fact that what is godly is contributing in the comp, in the, in, in, in the context of functionality, contributing to the order that God started. It is also why we are often passive in business. True, true, <laughs> and. <laughs> because you don't believe it's because you, you really don't believe it is your assignment. And, and so when I believe it's my assignment, I'm not going to be passive. So, right. It, it is that I have to make sure that I serve my purpose. And if something gets in the way of me doing that, right. I'm not just going to sit aside and say, Oh, well, you know, that's not the right thing to do. Right. Um, it's a not fair thing to do because 
the Bible really doesn't address fairness. It addresses justice. True. True. Yo, <laughs> Kevin, I'm so glad you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, me and I'm like all excited. Because when I now started, when I, when I first started on um, business, I was Miss Passive herself. <clears throat> I sat there and I was thinking, well, you know, things are going to work out. And I didn't honestly didn't have the entrepreneur mindset because I was an employee before working for a big organization <clears throat> in the airline industry. Everything is really structured already. You don't have to do anything but go to work and go back home and report. And company makes millions and, you know, you get your little shares and you think that, okay, cool. That's, that's fine. That's how it goes. But what you're mentioning here, that passive mindset, it's it's hitting home for me. It's like I'm really excited because um, if I am understanding now from what you're sharing that if you don't see it as something dysfunctional taking place, you're not going to be driven to bring functionality into place. Yeah, you're going to tolerate it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and 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 it and and in and it's so weird. It it appears to be for a lot of us. Um, and I know I dealt with this. And I deal with it. I have to bring my mind back to this. It is what we're doing sometimes in being passive. We're saying to ourselves, we're actually being selfish. We're saying, well, I'm not going to put myself out there and take any hits because um, maybe it's not worth it to me, but it may be worth it to other people because you're here on assignment. Yes, totally. Totally agree. Uh, tell me, tell me, tell me. OMG. OMG. Um, I just want to share a little bit here, right? Mm -hmm. um, what you are speaking here is 100% aligning to what Father has been showing me um, for the past few months, right? And um, <clears throat> he have encouraged me to write books on it. Right, one in particular is the poverty mindset. Right, and um, he actually showed me how rich people also have the poverty mindset. And it's one of the reasons why people in government, when they reach in government, they end up doing all sorts of um, you know, fraudulent things, mm -hmm. stealing money, hiding money, you know, um, getting in government. In our system here, we have five years as a term, and they reach in that in that position to serve the country, but yet still, you know, they, they, they steal money. And it's because of the poverty mindset. Although they are educated, although they, you know, they are raking in a, a handsome salary, because of the poverty mindset, they are selfish. And yes, people yes. with the poverty mindset, they cannot see further than themselves. So they are not going to see what is God's big plan. They can't see that something is dysfunctional and to, you know, put themselves in the, in the um in the functional zone so you know to see the problem and correct it and this is what father showed me <clears throat> back in 2019 right now in 2019 i had a vision and i watched a movie at night working at night shift and the name of the movie was divergent right and that movie brought a lot of perspective in how the world is supposed to run and when father showed me that, he told me what my assignment supposed to be is to destroy the poverty mindset. You understand? That because makes sense. A, a lot of people, a lot of Christians running around with the poverty mindset and they are living and they think having, having wealth is actually against God's will. Absolutely. You understand? Right. And, and I, I watch me, I, watch me, I, it, it's so much that I actually, um, and the thing is that I'm really passionate about business and, you know, educating other people about it. So I'm actually glad to be in the presence, you know, to get the information firsthand from you, from this perspective. Now, I am proving that I'm not a madman. I am not <laughs> yeah. a madman. Not, no, not a madman. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, and it, and, it, and it really is, it is really about, uh, um, you know, as you say, I started, it's about, okay, entrepreneurial mindset. We, we got to get be, most, most um, entrepreneurs are failing because of m mindset. Odelia, um, I see that you have raised your hand. So um, I love that you raised your hand. 
you're using this the right way. I don't, I don't ever even raise my hand. I'm going to unmute you so you can talk. Unmute. Adelia, you're fighting me on the unmute. <laughs> Adelia, do you want to say something? All right, wait a minute. Uh, I had there to open go. it up. Okay. Um, I, I did that by mistake. I'm over here playing with this. Um, <laughs> uh, I was trying to get to the chat part, but um, I hit the hand part. Anyway, well, what's interesting to me is what you said about this, my assignment. Mm -hmm. Instead of the purpose, I'm still, I'm still chewing on that one. Um, when you say, what's the difference between the assignment and the purpose? Well, it, uh, and so uh, I'm going to speak it to it my way, and then I'm going to have Zane uh, explain it in terms of a, as a, from a, a moral reference point. But when I think people, when I hear people say purpose, it is mm -hmm. almost like it's an obligation <laughs> that I go, okay, my purpose is to, uh, and generally, most of our purpose to the same point is about a moral thing it is about i have to do it's a or b i have to do i have to be in ministry or i because that's what the lord wants. my purpose here is to to make sure that uh these this certain group here's the gospel mm -hmm. i'm gonna say that's fine but is that really your assignment like what do you what do you do what why are you here on the earth? So let me give you an example, and the best analogy I can give you is a tree's assignment is to, an apple tree's assignment is to produce apples. Right. But guess what it all also does? What? It actually provides beauty for your eyes. It mm -hmm. provides oxygen. Right. It provides fertilization for the ground. Mm -hmm. All of that's wrapped up in purpose. Mm. But its real job is to, its real assignment is to produce healthy apples. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And so that's the assignment for the apples? No, the assignment, the tree's assignment is to produce apples. Right. Okay, I got that. Right? Does that make sense? The assignment is to produce the apple. There it is, but its purpose on the earth is to provide what the earth needs. I got you. <laughs> I got it, man. And it has multiple functionalities. Mm. But it's not its main thing. Producing oxygen is a byproduct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is not its main thing. I got you on that, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. <clears throat> it's real awesome because uh, I, I always think that purpose um, as, um, I don't know, I, I guess it's the way I look at it is because I had to break it down for children. Yes. Um, um, purpose as a I, I saw it as, as twofold. Okay. Uh, uh, the purpose is um, God uh, is the reason why you're here, and the uh, the reason why you're here is part uh -huh. of. I look at it as part of your assignment. Uh, why God? Well, you, God that, okay, go ahead. How God wired you. Uh huh. And um and uh. And so it's, it's one purpose, uh, general, that's the first one. Everyone that's a believer has a general purpose. Uh-huh. And, and, and each one of them have a specific purpose, the way God wired them. So, so, what, general, you, so what you just described, what the second part, when you said a specific person, I'm saying that's your assignment. Okay, I got you. One is what you're doing, right? So the other one is your why. Purpose is why, mm -hmm. in my mind. And, and I think the disconnect when I hear people say purpose, it always, be, it always gets people to saying that 
Uh, let me back up. So I, I just pulled this up. The definition of purpose is the reason for which something is done. Mm -hmm. Think about it. It is the reason okay. for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Right. Created or why something is created, right? Mm -hmm. Or for which something exists. So the example here in, the, in, the, in the, the dictionary here gives us the purpose of meeting is to appoint a trustee. But that might not be the assignment of what's going on, no. right? That has, the, what, what is the board's assignment? There is a difference. Huh? No, it's not the meeting. No, it's the service. Okay, gotcha. Right? It is <laughs> because there's no reason to point, there's no reason to have the meeting or point a trustee unless there's an assignment. Got you. <laughs> yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Zane, would you like to add anything to that, please? Yeah, that is actually um, very accurate eh? because, um, for, for example, and we, I mean, we could, use, we could use different analogies, and I'll just right. use two, right? From, um, starting off with, we can all say that, um, let's say, persons that may be connected to a, a, a company that designs vehicles, you can see that everybody in that company, their purpose is to build a vehicle. Yes. But the question is, which assignment do you have in the process? So you might be aligned with, with it's good. making sure that your steering system is, is functioning while the next person yeah. is aligned with the radiator, next one engine, next one uh, your, your braking system. So your assignment is pretty much identifying what part are you playing in the big picture? How are you okay. contributing to the entire process moving? And um, you can also look at that in the, in, in, in the context of uh, in the Bible. We are all priests. And we know that the priest's, the, the priest's purpose is to serve. But the next question is, how exactly are you serving as a priest when you come into appointment? So you have priests in particular that had the assignment to move Israel from point A to point B. But the next priest that came, his assignment was different. So okay. it's, it's, um, Sister Odelia, basically, how, what you are selling rightfully put, what you identify as general purpose and specific purpose is the same thing. Your general purpose there is what you are here to do on a general basis, and the specific is how you're contributing to that. Or full, how do you go about fulfilling that in that? Particularly, how are you actually contributing to the entire process? But okay. it is, it's also something that, um, in, in, in addition to that, what I is, is really interesting that actually Telvin is pointing is, 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 is hitting that note because when you look at it from the perspective of functionality like that, indirectly, what Telvin is saying is your lack of functionality is robbing the entire universe and robbing creation of what God intended it to have by your presence. That makes mm. sense. It is exactly what I'm saying, Zane. And, and so when I think of Robert was talking about his book, I am like, the longer you wait to write that book, there is somebody praying. What I realize, they're praying for the answer it's true. that you know. And they're crying. And they're saying, God, why haven't you heard me? But he has heard. And he sent the answer. But he's waiting on somebody else to do it. Yeah, some, that person is there, and if they're not fulfilling it technically, then it's function in the, in, in the, entire, in, in the, entire, in the entire scope of creation, which is actually, uh, hey, that's, that, that, that is something that needs to be amplified to them, seriously, because the body of Christ is so caught up, they're so um, driven by this moral compass of just being good, but being good 
is, is, is as Sister Olivia put it, something that is general. You can be good, but how exactly are you contributing in goodness? So that, that is awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, so can I, you give an example? Of the no, please, that I'm clear? please, yes. Um, I was thinking about because I, I shared this with the the, uh, the kids because uh, we we've been we've been talking about our gifts, our our identity, and our purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was sharing with them that just like um, my gift is one of my gifts are, are is teaching. Mm -hmm. And I said just because it is a lot of teachers because we have a lot of believers. They have a lot of believers have the gift of teaching. It's the uh, you just have to you know seek God how He wants you to use that gift to teach. And I used myself as an example when I went to seek God about how He wanted me to teach um, what He had given me to give out. Um, and um, I told us the story about how uh, I was talking to God because He gave me a vision about a school. And um, and I didn't know how the school was going to come about, so I went looking for buildings. I wrote down a list of what I would need for a school, the people, the staff, and all that stuff. And then when I found out that I need a building license and I had to go back to school, I told God, I said, God, I said, Lord, by the time I get to do this school, I said, the kids will be grown. <laughs> and he taught right back to me, <laughs> And I sat on the bed quiet for a minute and he spoke to me, he says, do it online. And that's how I got to doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> I love it. But that is assignment, right? You're, you're working in assignment. That's awesome. Yes. I love it. I love it. It's so funny. <laughs> the reason I laugh when you say that, I have a friend that I, that I used to work with at Coles, and we worked together the, all, the entire 19 years. And she would always tell me she wanted to start a, a youth center. Mm -hmm. And she was like, because, you know, I love the babies. I love the babies. And so I would say, like, after probably, like, the 15th year her telling me, I was like, um, okay, the babies got babies now. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Are right, you going to do this or you're not? Okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Um, but I got it now. Awesome. Thank you. And thanks, Zane, for, for helping me with that. Um, anyone yeah. else? I saw somebody else's hand come raised. It was me. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I want to thank you so much because uh, it seems to, to me uh, you are gathering uh, uh, the puzzle uh, before we we didn't think uh, from this angle, and uh, we think uh, in this uh, section uh, always we think randomly, uh, without organizing our thoughts step by step to to start to understand the whole picture and take a step in it, and uh, we we always. Uh, it depend on our talent, uh, on our um, special uh, uh, tolerance, and uh, didn't know the mechanism of of this uh, of this uh, process uh, in 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 whole. And I think that will be the first step you make it uh, with us here to make uh, the children of kingdom understand how to make it practically. And right. how to and right. how to 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 make uh, finances to uh, to accomplish uh, the assignment <laughs> assignment and also to make their life difference because we we have a, a hindrance in this uh, section particularly um, to move forward in the kingdom. All, 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 all of the things I, I see in my life in Christianity, uh, that was short life uh, three, three years ago. But uh, most of Christian I, I met, met them, they have uh, this hindrance in this uh, section about uh, finance. Mm -hmm. And they tried only the spiritual way. And uh, it seems to be you, you walk in dark, you don't know how to go and where to go and how to to uh, lead by spirit in this way 
and they uh, separate spirits uh, and they uh, make a separation between spirit, spiritual way and uh, physical way. And this is, uh, I think this is uh, the point that we miss. That spiritual way and physical way is, is two sides to, uh, for, for one coin. It's, it's, it's one for us and we must stick step by step in the, the both way in the same time. And uh, now I can understand and uh, I am so excited to, to listen to, uh, <laughs> to you <laughs> uh, uh, and continue with you. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Lori, I think you wanted to say something. You didn't have any hands, so I'm going to unmute you. I'm going to try. Or you can unmute yourself. Oh, I just didn't know where the hand was. I was like, but, you know, I was kind of listening to you, and I was kind of getting that whole, because I was like, yeah, what is the difference between the purpose and your, and your assignment? Because I think for me, because, you, you know, a lot of times when you have, like, a ray of light, you know, if it's focused on everything, you're not going to have a – you know, a laser. And I'm just like, sometimes I need to know exactly what, you know, is there one particular assignment or can you have many assignments? Because sometimes I feel like I'm all over the board. You know what I'm saying? I mean, well, we I can have, have, we can have multiple things that we want to do, right. Yeah. That we yeah. want to do. Yeah. And there are also things that I believe God is puts on, puts on our heart. Um, there, so there could be many good ideas. And I think the question gets to be for me, especially around business. Um, I, I start to say to myself, okay, I don't know how all these things are going to come together. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick that thing right now that I think makes the most sense and that I can easily ex that I can execute. And I'm now going to wait for them to all come together, but I'm not right because because I'm 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 really bought into this whole idea that a vision is yet for an appointed time. Okay. So that means I am personally going to say to myself, I see it, I see this and that and that, right? And I'm gonna put it on the side and I'm gonna but I'm going down this path right now. And maybe they'll all be put together because I'm starting to believe just my own experience that the desires of my heart are the things he ultimately wants for wants. But if I'm looking in a mindset, okay, if I'm looking at a mindset that I'm going to be around until I'm three score and 10, none of that's, I, I might be thinking differently. But if I'm in a mindset that I'm talking about being around for 100 to 150 years, let me ask you a question. What is time? Because my decision is made from that reference point about what's next. And well, because there are people who go, well, wait a minute, I better hurry up and do it because I don't have a lot of time. I don't look at it like that. I just believe two things. One, if he gave it to me, I need to figure out how, because the bot do everything decently in order. What makes sense to do first? Then I'm going to put these things on the side and I'm going to add to them as they make sense. Right? And I'm not worried that none of it's going to happen. It's going to happen when it's supposed to. And not, and I have time, but even if the time, even if the timing's not what I think it is, I know he can do things in 24 hours. And I, am, I have come to this conclusion in business. And, and, and so I'm going to use this example, Lori, and hopefully I'm answering what you're, you're talking about. There are things that in companies that I thought could never happen, like things that I thought we should do, things that we can expand our business, uh, co-centric things that are connected that I never thought could do, but something happened with the way business works or technology that actually made something that I thought was really complicated and a very quick time actually just came together. Like in a moment, in a moment of time. 
Does that answer your question, Lori? Not really, but. All right. Well, so yeah. ask your question again. Maybe, maybe I need it. <laughs> I hate, to, you say, asking what you I hate be to say next? this because, because, you know, Zane's always talking about methods, like don't get into a method. And I'm like, but I need a, like a oh. set of things that tells me, okay, you know, like, okay. Cause I mean, I love music. I love ministry. I love, I mean, to, I'm going to be real with you right here. Uh -huh. I don't yeah. want to start a business, but every time I go to do something, the Lord takes me through third year business courses. He puts me through, you know, four years of business management college, you know, all this stuff, business, business, business. And I'm like, oh my gosh, truthfully, I don't want to start a business, but everything leads me up to business. And I know it says be about my father's business. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like what? all I want to do is minister. Uh -huh. Truthfully, and you know, but it's like I have so many things that I'm passionate about. But when you say, What is my assignment? and I'm like, Do I have to laser focus of what my assignment is? Do I have to get with God, say, What is exactly yes. Yes. my assignment? Yes, because I mean, I absolutely to I, me, by the way, no question. Well, see, it's like I do that, but it's like, well, let me, but let me add a part two to that. Yeah. My belief. Yeah. Is that yes, I need, and if I don't hear something, then I do the very next thing. I teach all my clients that. We get you get more direction. Plane get more direction in the air than they actually get on the ground. <laughs> but see, when I go, because I'm gonna be real with you, when I go to the Lord. I mean, I could hear for other people all day long, but when I go to see what is my assignment, what exactly is my assignment, I can tell you what my desire is, and I'm like, okay, is that specifically what that assignment is, or, I mean, maybe, you know, Zane's But, but what's wrong with that, though? That's my question. Huh? I'm asking you, what's wrong with your desire? If you're wrong, you're wrong. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little no, stressed. I'm being, I'm, I, no, 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 I know, I know your, rela saying, your, your relationship with him isn't that fragile, right? No, no, no. And so if you don't have, and, and literally I'm saying, you don't, by the way, there, I have clients who call me all the time and say, I don't know what to do next. And I'm going to say, what do you see as a problem that you can solve? Go do that. Go do that and see if that's where you're supposed to be and, you're, and you will get more direction as you go. I think my biggest problem... And I'm not is saying not, not everyone should start a business, by the way. Not everyone should start a business. Yeah. Some people should be in a business. Some people should support other people in their business. I think my biggest problem is not having the money to go do what I need to do. I, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like to have the money, you have to have, you know, either a business or people funding Absolutely. to you, which, you know, I did the whole mission thing and people don't want to give into the mission. So I have to have some sort of way to produce wealth. And I, I think that's what frustrates me the most. It's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to take well, what I think, what I think, and, and I can fly on that, yeah. But, yeah. but what I feel like, just to throw this out for other people who are thinking, I don't think everyone should do a business. I do think, I do think it, is a, it, it is a way to serve in ministry, right? Tent making, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, Tent making is a clear way to be able to actually create wealth that allows you to be able to sustain, to be able to fund other things. Mm -hmm. But, and this is where, this is, this is, I, this is, this is Telvin speaking. So yeah. here's the thing. Okay. I do not believe God 
order something he does not pay for. Okay. If I make a decision to do something, it's because it's I, because I have a God given desire, right? Mm -hmm. And I do the steps on that thing, and I maybe even have to war with it a little bit. And I don't mean like striving. My personal belief is it's gonna it's gonna line up for me. Now it may not be the best thing for me, but there. Listen, everything I ask for, I get the I get it. I just gotta find out where it is. Everything there. I, I, this is the whole the substratum and the foundation of everything I'm saying today. If you want to start a business and you're clear about the business and then we can apply principles to the business, I'm telling you, the money will show up. The people you need will show up. It is not it because it's a law. <laughs> okay, I get you. It's just a law. <laughs> But we can talk offline. Okay. I'd be glad to. Okay. Thanks, Talvin. Yeah. I love your passion, though. I love your passion. I'm like, between you and Zane, I'm like, man, I need their energy. <laughs> you guys are just, I love it. I love your energy. Seriously. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll lend you some. Okay. Lend me some. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, Robert, I think you have something to comment on. Yeah, Telvin. Um, listening to, to Lori, right? Now, this is just my perspective on it, on what she was, you know, mentioning. And the perspective I view <clears throat> these things from, and I actually try to teach people this, is that one thing I have to do is identify your passion. That's a key. Um, a lot of us, a lot of us have likes, but are not able to identify what our passion is. Yeah, and, and we're going to do an exercise on that. Right. And I believe that is where um, Lori's issue is, that she likes a lot of things, but she is not identifying her passion. Right? When you identify your passion, then you are able to know what your assignment is. Because, you know, we have talents like me. I like electrical. I like operations. I like um, landscaping. I, like, I love all these things. But my passion is in teaching. My passion is business. And this is where my energy flow naturally. And yeah. this is how I get to realize where my assignment is. My assignment is not in the electrical field. But I like electrical. I can do it. And it's a means of you know, income. I can actually do it and generate well from that. But what is... What my assignment is, is what I'm going to change the world with. What is my contribution to everything? The whole gear system. This is yeah. my contribution. That is my assignment. And this is what your passion. This is why each individual naturally born with a particular intelligence category that is actually picking more than the others. There are nine, nine, nine categories of intelligence, right? Yes. And each person, each person on the face of the earth, born naturally with one peaking. That one that is peaking, that is where your passion is lying. Because your energy flows in the least resistance, least part of resistance. You can yes. monetize exactly. your place of grace. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. And you um this is, I personally believe this is where, um, where Lori's um, identification has to be in, what she likes and what is her passion. Well, and in a future class, answer. we'll be able to unravel that, but I, th but I think she has a more complex problem. Right, um, okay. <laughs> but I think, I love what you just added, because I oh, think it needs to be Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it is 9.16. Um, the next session, prop, the next section would probably take about 20, 25 minutes. So I'm going to probably close it here. Um, and, um, because I think that, and that next section, by the way, for you guys, so you know, is really around, 
um, it's really around my developing a mindset for, for success from a biblical perspective and a business perspective, um, which is not necessarily separate, but we're, we'll talk about it in two different contexts. Um, and I think it's important um, to be, uh, to just ruminate on what was talked about today because it sets the, it's the substratum or the, the foundation that sets the platform for us to be able to dig in and do some of the, the fun work. Um, and I think when we, maybe we'll even address some of Lori's things when we start to identify, talk about identify your big why, um, because um, that is um, where I think we can really unravel more of what she's what she's talking about um so i'm going to zane if you don't have anything else to add i'm going to uh ask someone to pray us out yeah uh, um you'll hear me everyone hear me am i yes we can hear you okay <laughs> yeah um well actually just um three things <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, firstly, with regards to to, um, to Lori, I I just like to actually contribute to to, to, to what both you and and even um, Mark's contribution there. In that, um, what I have found with myself is remember this 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 the scripture that says that it is. God or Father in you to will and to work. And um, if, even if you have a desire and you may not be sure um, that what, what, where you want to go, because, and even as Selvin identified here tonight, because of the fact that you are born existentially to fulfill that, even if your de 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 desire that you tap into is not the one, you're going to be drawn right back to what you existentially here to do. <laughs> yeah, and, and also, um, maybe with regards to this is just a, a, a gentle, con, um, a, a gentle nudge here. Maybe what with, with regards to the business knowledge that she has, maybe one of the things that she's doing is separating business from God, and they actually should be going together if that makes sense. <laughs> Right? Which, which brings us to, um, to what, uh, what Telvin was actually saying, monetize your grace. <clears throat> yeah. Se um, secondly, I would like to, uh, I would also like to, um, to formally thank Telvin for his contribution to the body in this way. And I'm saying this, bro, not, not only from me, but when I say me, not only Zane, but I think I can speak on behalf of God here. <laughs> when I say, um, I, I also like to express appreciation for the contribution that you're making to the body in the context of business, because the body, the body of Christ in particular, for a long time they have separated uh, money from, from God. And what you're and what you're doing here is pretty much showing that. It is one the same, which is how it's supposed to be. And, it is, and, and they are making it. If you, want, if you look at it from a scriptural perspective, they are making it. And it's um, technically the body cannot, the body of Christ cannot take up dominion if they do not understand how the joy wealth. Because the, 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 the economy of, of the holy nation, just as every other nation and David. The, the strength of the of the nation is is uh, strongly rooted in the nation's economy. So if we are to be powerful on the earth, we have that to govern that either too. And thirdly, from a personal perspective, um, everybody here, well, most most persons here are actually persons who, who are part of the element and everybody knows that I've been studying the pneumatology of Christ. And what I present in the element is pretty much the spiritual component and how to how to function as a spirit. Now, when I got into business in particular, 
There are a lot of things that actually can mention here tonight that are things that also come up in pneumatology. But what I would like to particularly thank to everybody tonight on a personal level is that for me, come to the understanding of the of how to function as a spirit, I had to actually walk it out to reproduce it, to be able to teach it. What Evan has done here for me tonight is give me a next probably couple of years to apply it to business. With a lot of things that he's saying here, it was it's fantastic to actually hear someone else say the same thing. So it's actually, you know, when you receive revelation on something, but you're not having to actually walk it out. Um, the revelation, there's a lot of apprehension. And the the bombardment of, of the, the, the opposite voice is usually a problem. <laughs> and so so what you did here for me tonight in particular was confirm a heck of a lot and actually given me the what I mean, you know, as I just said, it it it, it, like, it actually saves me you know, having to want to invest years to actually prove that in business and have someone like yourself that God's put here for this purpose. Propels me now, so I know actually you know, um, what, what, what you're seeing and what in pneumatology you're seeing is one and the same. And it, 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 on, on, on a first level, it gives me the, the, um, the, the strength and the, the, and the nudge to walk it and not be afraid. So I would like to thank you very much, brother, for, for, for your contribution in these in, uh, in these areas and also personally. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, um, I think well, that's. I don't think there's anything else that I, that, 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 uh, that I'd like to add to that. Um, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. So who can we get to pray us out? Who's volunteering? I'll go for it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the wisdom that you have poured out tonight in this session through your Holy Son, tell them. We thank you for all those that will hear and listen. We thank you for the application of this, of this intelligence and for the multiplication of our incomes as we apply the wisdom of your Holy Scriptures. We thank you also for each and every person that um, are here and their families that are represented. We bless them all. And in your name, Father, we go forth to fulfill the promises that wealth and riches will be in each and every one of our homes abundantly. We thank you that you have reminded us tonight that there is no shortage, that there is an abundance, and that we, your holy priests and sons, are given a commission to govern everything and bring the dysfunctionality in business back to the perspective of Elohim. We bless your holy name. So be it. Amen. Amen. Good night. I'm going to, uh, as soon as I get the recording, I will um, pass it on to Zane so he can tell us where he wants to post it. And I will also share the slide. Okay, awesome. I, I will be posting it on um, both the Facebook um, community as well as on the website so that we can actually uh, promote it because this here, the body of Christ needs, needs this brother. On a serious note, they need this. <laughs> it's what he's been telling me. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, even even from the context of, of assignment, don't rob the creation, brother. Put it out. <laughs> ah, that's right. That is right. That is one hundred percent right. That's you, so. That's so right. That's so good. That's so good. That's so good. Delvin, you have no idea how what you presented tonight helps me in the context of business. I cannot express it in words because, as as we both know. Um, in the even in the area of pneumatology, that, that, that what, what 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 came out to be pneumatology, there's never there was not someone there to emulate. And in this case, 
this is your purpose and this is very helpful to the body so don't rob the body <laughs> got it got let it. it let it out no i listen you you are you hit it you hit it you hit it so, all right you. thank you guys have a good night all right same too all right bye-bye lessons -bye.